Hello there. Day seven. One whole week. One full week. And look what's happened. Um, a lot of teams appear to be screwed after tonight. Uh, first off, we start with the uh, Tampa and Columbus series. It was kind of low-key and quiet. Not much happening. Uh, all the scoring took place in period, was it uh, two, I believe? Um, Gaudreau accounted for both goals. He scored one and assisted on the other. Barclay Gaudreau, yet another X shark. But um, uh, Tampa won two to one, and it looks like, in my estimation, that they have definitely learned their lesson from last year. They have. They are actually playing. They are actually giving a damn. I guess it helped that they didn't win 62 games this year. How they couldn't because, well, there was a pause. Because um, last year when they won all those games, they just sat back for the, la the last, like, two and a half weeks of the season because that was a lot of meaningless hockey they played. And then that complacency stuck around. It didn't go away by playoff time. But just like that, Columbus pounced on them. Now... Everybody is on the same level, pretty much on guard, on the same guard. And Tampa and, and everybody kind of went um, uh, months without playing any meaningful hockey. And then everybody started, and then the setup allowed teams to play meaningful hockey at the same exact time. And Tampa's prepared and ready. And now it's a different story. Now after four games in a playoff series against, against Columbus, they're one went away from advancing. And it's not that Columbus looked lost. They were just outplayed. Columbus, I think the Blue Jackets had the same intensity and that drive they had last year. But this year, it's just, the Magic's kind of running out. So, Tampa's, so Tampa is now one win away from advancing to round two, something they failed to do last year, even when they had the, that historic season. And then the avalanche happened. Oh, my. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. A sleeping giant was awoken after that loss in Game 3. Because even up to the 1, the story was Darcy Kemper and how he kept things close. But good Game 1. Darcy was great that whole game except for that 83 second span with 3 goals were scored on him. But except for that, he was amazing. And then... Game two, he was pretty. He was still pretty good, but um, we were we, we, but the Avalanche kind of squeaked by and got a we're at the right place at the right time. And that's how we won game two, even though we didn't play very well. Game three, we couldn't solve Darcy at all in game three. Darcy was still getting those stopping those shots. We were shooting, 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 and, and but not we weren't relentless enough tonight. As, as as the legendary Alice Cooper once sang, was no more Mr. Nice Guy. We made it rain on Kemper. We scored early enough on him, and then we kept scoring. We kept getting relentless. Two power play goals in the first period after that, both scored by Nazem Kadri. And then Kadri had an assist in period two. And that sound you're hearing is Leafs fans cursing was Leafs fans cursing at their TV after seeing Kadri's game. <laughs> but um Yeah, and the game and the and the goals just kept going, going, going. Kemper got knocked out. It was what? It was four one. It was four one after forty minutes, and Rick Tockett, the coach of Coyotes, took Kemper out and put Anti Ranta in. It went it went in the first Within the first quarter of a minute of the period, first shot, first shot he saw went in. Kale McCarr. You can't smoke harder without Kale. And like I said, the sweeping giant was awoken. We put up a lucky seven in that game. Four on Kemper in two periods, and three on Ronta in that in that third period alone. Three power play goals. Uh, mo many many Avalanche players with points. And Arizona's waving the white flag. Once Kemper went out, I figured that was Arizona saying, "Well, we give up." <laughs> so, so the so the balance of power. If we actually lost it, we're on the verge of losing it. It's pretty much cemented with us now. 
Uh, the Avalanche have a commanding three games to one lead uh, after to, after tonight's blowout win, which brings us to the Bruins. <laughs> now it looked like two to two was going to happen in that series, with Carolina up to nothing, but then a funny thing happened. See, Carolina suddenly forgot how to shoot at the net. Boston sure certainly didn't. Because they were shooting and scoring. Four times to be exact. In that third period. It took Carolina the full 18 and a half minutes of the first period. Of the of that final frame to get a shot on goal. Now that shot happened to go in. To make it 4-3. But they couldn't tie it up. So Boston. And they really surprised me. Because I thought for sure. I thought for sure that... Um, the way the lackadaisical way they and they took the round robin, just not caring and not playing, just going, eh, it's not the playoffs. Wake us, wake us, wake us when it's in the playoffs. The way they just didn't care. I thought that was going to transcend to round one, and they would still have that complacency. And Carolina, a team that was red hot, would just pounce on them. No, no, that's not what happened. Even with Rask going opting out. No, they're, they're, they're as ruthless as ever. They are they are trouncing um, Carolina, and now they're up three to one. So Tampa and Colorado and Boston are three to one. Will Vancouver join? Would Vancouver join them? No. And here's the funny thing. Now St. Louis had a, was led by Ryan O'Reilly, who had three points, two goals and assists. Uh, they won three to one. But here's here's the funny thing about this. With Jordan Biddington in net, nothing. Matter of fact, that's when the offensive, that's when defensive problems were happening. But all of a sudden, with Jake Allen, who was originally a problem, ever since they put Jake Allen in, they haven't, they have yet to lose. They started Jake Allen in Game Three, and that's the game they won in overtime, and then they won tonight. So, this leads me to believe they might go with Jake for, for at least the rest of this series. And if they advance with him, we might see Jordan start game one, maybe, of, of the of whatever semifinal matchup they're in. But it's just amazing how this has turned around. Because remember, Bennington was the savior, the goalie savior that kicked that that jump started the big comeback entering the the, the, the county year twenty nineteen when they were in the bottom of the league. And they ended up winning the Stanley Cup six months later. Jordan to Jordan Billington was that catalyst. And now, well, I'm not going to say he's a pariah, but now he's been pushed to the side for the goalie that, that was originally pushed to the side, Jake Allen. And Jake Allen's kind of saving the day for the series. So St. Louis and Vancouver, that's two and two. And to be honest, thank God St. Louis win one because... The way the first round was going, it looked like there wasn't going to be there was going to be like one real close series out of the eight, and that was Calgary Dallas. Matter of fact, here's pretty here's pretty much the story so far. Now now the rest of Game Four is to take place tomorrow, but the story so far is this: in the Eastern Conference, um, uh, excuse me, uh, in the Eastern Conference. Um, Tampa's up three to one. Philly's up two to one, but could be three to one after Game Four if Montreal doesn't wake up. Um, Boston's up three to one, and uh, the Islanders up three and zero. Oh. So not so no close, no real close series. In the Eastern Conference, and Philly could be on its way to be three one. Also, in the Western Conference, the Western Conference, Vegas is up three to one. It was three zero until game four, until Chicago in game four. So, but Vegas is still up three to one. Colorado's up three to one, but there are two close. There are now two close gripping series in the West as both St. Louis and Vancouver and Dallas Calgary series. Each one is two and two. 
So, uh, and to be honest, Calgary and Dallas really shouldn't be. I honestly had Calgary kind of being ahead of them after after uh, four, but uh, but it's pretty close. So that so that series is two and two, and Vancouver and St. Louis series is two and two. But the other six have teams ahead three either three zero or three one. So there's not a lot of drama in round one. There's a lot of overtime in round one, but not a lot of drama in these series. And that's my recap of game. And that's what happened in, game, in day seven overtime today. Uh, some close calls and a big blowout. The white flags may start start waving in a moment, but here we go. What's in store for us to for us tomorrow? Well, not one, but two elimination games tomorrow. But those come later. It kicks off at noon noon Pacific time, three p.m. Eastern. Game four, um, Flyers and Canadians at five thirty Eastern, two thirty Pacific. Game five, a pivotal game five between the Stars and Flames. That's two and two. And the, and the winner will get that chance to clinch in Game 6. The first elimination game, Game 4, Islanders, Capitals. Islanders have a chance to to take out the, bring out the brooms and complete the sweep of the Capitals. And Chicago continues to face elimination. They avoided it on uh, Sunday with their Game 4 win. They need to try to avoid it again tomorrow night. It's Game 5. Vegas and Chicago, and Vegas leads that series three games to one. Now, now depending, depending on what happens in tomorrow's game four between the Habs and, and Flyers, all of the games on Wednesday. Actually, no, I was about to say all the games on Wednesday would be a uh, elimination games, but that wouldn't be true because Wednesday is also game five of Vancouver and St. Louis, and that's definitely not elimination because that's two and two. But we could see four elimination games on Wednesday. There's going to be at least three. But um, so that's my recap of today's action. It's pretty good, pretty gripping, very fun for this Avalanche fan. So um, I'll be back tomorrow night to recap everything that happened that, that happens in tomorrow's action. And I say until then, fellow hockey fans.